Hello, Nahua, Florida. Thanks for joining in today, uh, February the 14th, 2024. We are elated to introduce to you Diana de Avila. She uh, is an artist based in Sarasota, embarked her artistic journey in 2017, and she's gone a long way. Very prolific artist. <laughs> Diana faced challenges of a relapse of multiple sclerosis and worsening traumatic brain injury. However, she decided to fight and create and be productive and positive, which is the way to go in life. Don't give up just with whatever you encounter, whichever <laughs> obstacles you move on forward. So you're exemplary and we will follow in your footsteps to keep fighting no matter what comes our way. <laughs> That's right. Um, and I'm just, I'm doing one, one show of my face before I hide. <laughs> whatever you, you want, whatever is comfortable. Despite lacking formal training, the Avila has created over 2000 digital art pieces rooted in fractal geometry, drawing inspiration from the convergence of quantum physics, chaos theory, and divine order. Her cosmic digital art, both dynamic and serene, delves into various technological expressions of art. Within the artistic movement, Texpressionism, founded by Colin Goldberg, she has found her tribe, continually pushing the boundaries of her digital art and exploring innovative approaches to creation. She's a signature member of Nawa, Florida, and she's a member of the National League of American Pen Women. And um, she's also a member in Sarasota, in, of another group, uh, I'm sorry, oh, here it is, um, known as S -A -Art, S -Art Q, um, yeah. represented by Define Art Gallery in Sarasota. Diana is not only the subject, but also the co-author of her award-winning book, Soldier, Sister, Savant. This book shares her artistic journey, showcases samples of her art from 2017 to early 2021. In the summer of 2023, Diana and her co-author Wilma Davidson secured a publishing contract for their upcoming children's book, Super Cat Splat Splat, set to be released this summer. So let's welcome Diana. We're looking forward to this amazing presentation. Thank you. Let's see. Okay, everybody there? <laughs> Um, this talk is going to be a little bit different than my normal art talks, and I tend to let the slides speak for themselves, but I will interject a little bit more here. But one caveat, beautiful art has a personal cost, and some of the TBI sequelae I deal with is migraines, and I happen to be in the middle of a nasty migraine right now that resulted in insomnia last night. So I got to sleep about 3.30 in the morning, but the beauty is the gift of this piece. This piece is a perfect example of synesthesia at work in its most intense way, but the cost is sometimes a big old headache. So if I mix up my words, there's my excuse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Annabelle mentioned my book was released in 2021, and I have the honor of having my co-author on here, Wilma Davidson, who is so often my words. So if I happen to drop off or lose my thoughts, Wilma can always step in. She knows my story like I do. The book was made into a seven minute short documentary called The Color of Genius. That was quite an honor. If you want to dig a little bit more into some of my savantism and see more art and examples, I did an art in conversation with Farron. So that's on the YouTube channel for Nawa. So the heart of the conversation is synesthesia. What is synesthesia? You've got five senses. Imagine them getting all crossed and that if you touch something, you see a color, or if you hear something, you feel a touch, or if you feel a touch, you see a shape. You can see how this can take any combination. 
for me, I have sounds that create colors and shapes. And I realized that for the first year and a half of my art journey or so, and I'll show some pieces coming up, I listened to the same five songs over and over. And so they elicited a lot of fractal work. And I never realized that sounds were the thing driving. Chromesthesia, the most common type of synesthesia. And it's a sensory experience where a person associates sounds with colors. And I love this image. It's perfect. I should keep my own. <laughs> Some famous synesthetes and how they experienced it. Billy Joel had multiple types and Itzhak Perlman, who is, he's one of our Sarasota folks, sound to shape, Kandinsky sound to color, Tesla. And you'll see this with mathematicians and physicists. Yes. There are so many. I love this picture. So it, I've told you what synesthesia is. What do you imagine this girl is experiencing? What could she be experiencing? Can anybody speak up, unmute and tell me if she had synesthesia, what would it look like? She could Wilma, taste what do you the colors. Think? Oh yes, she could taste the colors. How about you, Wilma? What do you think? Yeah. I'm I'm sorry I had to unmute. <laughs> yeah. Is there um, any what do you think she could be doing? The she could feel well, I think the color and the cold she could put together. Yes, yes, yep. Temperature. There's any way, you know, she could be hearing the popsicle. Um it's just it's a bastardization of the senses, if you want to think of it that way. Yeah, it's like an exaggerated uh, feeling of pleasure. Yes, and all confused. Now, I just want to kind of explain the vessel, <laughs> me and my temperament for synesthesia and savantism. If anybody knows the Myers-Briggs, um, what's called an ISTJ, which is an introvert sensing, thinking, judging. And I'm very introverted. I'm a thinker. I'm quiet. I'm methodical. Now, my acquired savant side, my genius splinter skills are art, olfactory discrimination, smells, and math within my art. Quite a journey. So if I take a look back, 2024, seven years as an artist, 24-7, and I bring up a, a saying I love, savants know things they've never learned, Dr. Treffert, the Rain Man doctor. So I've gone from blobs, which you'll see, to gallery representation and a group like NAWA. And I got to tell you, it, it floors me. I'm, I'm very humbled. So I feel the gift is so much outside me. How do I experience synesthesia? Sound, shapes, chromesthesia. When I first experienced it in 2017, the shapes were crazy and in front of my eyes, probably within 12 inches. This is the perfect depiction. So um, it's determined those, that's pretty much a focal seizure that's happening. And that's, that's what I experienced with my migraines, focal seizures in the form of vertigo and spinning and lovely colors and shapes. Another way I see synesthesia is in the mind's eye. I've created over 2000 artworks as Annabelle mentioned, and it's a very obsessive exercise. It's a gift, but it's burdensome much of the time. Because, I mean, for instance, just that beautiful piece of art I, I did last night, When the Forest Dance. I mean, I, I pay for it with a headache. And then more art that wants to come out. <laughs> so I'm a slave to my savantism and synesthesia. And my synesthesia manifestation, as I mentioned, is sound to colors, touch to sound. 
And that touch to sound, I noticed when I would take a shower, hot shower, and I'd feel it, I would listen to an orchestra. It sounded like an orchestra of xylophones. Some of my art. The first one, Boomerangs and Blobs in 2017. And this is where it all started, frenetic shapes and colors. No art training or class, so I didn't know what was happening to me. And I continued in 2017, 2017 with these abstract shapes and no reference to any artists because I never knew any artists, didn't know about art. Here I started getting into my fractal work, a great picture of synesthesia. So when I imagined this, it was moving clockwise. A lot of my art is moving in my mind. And so I try to replicate that. My mind wanders, chromesthesia, another fractal. But this is a fractal I cre recreated using Bezier curves. And there are probably several hundred thousand of those curves in this piece. I went through a period, I called it my Bezier period, just where I kept recon reconstructing, deconstructing and reconstructing fractals, just my own weird process. This is another chromesthesia fractal hanging by a thread. This is the result of insomnia, very much like the opening piece, um, when the forest danced, is that what I called it? <laughs> um, Journey with Morpheus was the result of insomnia, frenetic, frenetic. And it is a fractal recreated with over 30,000 individual Bezier strokes. Now I went on and I used Disco Diffusion AI and I built on top of this piece, uh, and I should have included it, it's called Communion of the Saints. So it looks like hewn rock in the sides and you'll see angels and saints and different relics and objects. A strange and wonderful world. This is a fractal and one of my mother's favorites. <laughs> she says she wakes up to it. She has a copy of it, wakes up to it. Um, I imagined this moving. So I have created a animated version where the bubbles move up. Little goldfish in there. Another fractal, sunny synapses. Now, if you notice any of the texture in my work. And you might see that in some of my more recent works. If I have one, I'll point it out. But my eyes feel texture. I don't know, my eyes touch it. So when I add texture and I love to, it's as if my eyes are fingers and have the sense of touch and want to run themselves over whatever ridges what are, these look like strings and I feel like I could just pluck them. <laughs> it's, it's an odd thing, but I love texture in that way. It's, it's like a fidget toy for my eyes. Anami, Anami is a, uh, it has a fractal at its base, but then made into another cubistic kind of style. Jubilation, a great picture of synesthesia and coming and full display. Chromesthesia. Nautilus, a fractal, bringing some a little bit of translucence. I love to play with light and work with light. Oh, here's a little of that texture I talk about. Rewiring Humpty. I did a series that um, I based on my traumatic brain injury and I called it my Humpty series. So it started with after Humpty's fall, rewiring Humpty, Humpty reconstructed and Humpty found art. <laughs> but this is one where I, it's kind of an electronic pseudo weird and you could touch the 
you know, I, I almost can feel the temperature of the little coins on there and as if they're metallic or metal. They feel cold. Summer dreaming. This, this is a big piece and I feel a lot with it and I felt a lot with it and it probably caused a headache somewhere in there too. But movement, um, music, a, this was part of a swirly whirly series, very musical, very emotive. Hound of Heaven, based on the Francis Thompson poem. There's different etchings in here and just, um, yeah, line work, you'll see ladders and highways and just if you, lots of different symbolism throughout this piece. And after Humpty's Fall, and you, this is the first one in the Humpty series, and you can see that texture I'm talking about. If I could take my finger and run it over <laughs> some of those. I do, I feel with my eyes. Springs Embrace, you can, I can feel that one too. Can you feel it with your eyes? I can only describe it that way, my fingertips. I can run my fingers across it and I can feel the vibration. This is a piece that is going in my gallery, the fine art gallery. Uranium Tower. I can feel that one too with my eyes, touch. It feels cold, smooth. Brand new one, Phantasm. I love to bring elements of light. And again, you can, if you look at some of the hashing and some of, uh, can you see? Yeah, if you can see my, my cursor, these are, if I could run my finger over any of these sections, it's just a weird, weird expression. My eyes want to touch. And that's what I got. Wow, wow, wow. This is <laughs> amazing. You are so accomplished. And in spite of the injuries, the pain, and you are so creative and productive, I applaud you. Thank you. Kudos Thank to you. you. This is really a delight. The level of elegance of achievement, of sophistication is beautiful. Uh, I uh, want to say something that I recently encountered, somebody quoting this, that okay. sometimes when there's earthquakes, it unearths, it opens up cracks that we are now able to see. So if from what happened to you, which was a- Yes, motorcycle accident. You have yes. opened a life for yourself mm -hmm. and for us to view your inner you mm. and that and and you are enjoying this discovery and you have the amazing tools of the computer aiding you because <laughs> this would have taken you ages a lifetime to accomplish and you can accomplish it through the use of the computer that it's delightful you're at the right time the right place and i'm sorry you have to endure it, pain but your productiveness it, is unbelievable that's why maybe some people go to drugs and weird stuff. And for you, it just came. It just yeah. happened. You made the best out of it. And thank you. And it is, it's damaged to the left frontal lobe, in particular, if you want to think anatomically. So there have been people who've tried to, hey, let's help this along and cause a brain injury. Well, no, not everybody who gets that left frontal lobe injury gets a weird gift of art or music or math. I have an art and math gift within my art, yeah. And a, a olfactory acuity. So my nose can, I remember I was in the convent for seven years and I smelled a fire before anybody could even. <laughs> so I've learned recently that the heightened senses is very much a part of Cervantism so that yeah. So I'm done. What questions? Before anyone asks questions, I have a comment. Yeah. When I was in Taipei, 
I was at the um, Fine Art Museum and there was a video for about, I think it was like a 25 minute video. And my son and I sat down and watched it and it was about a guy and I'm, I'm going to research and send you his um, name, but he created this structure that was pretty much impossible. Everybody told him it was impossible that it would crumble and it was um, affectionately nicknamed the spaceship. But he had, the way he looked at architecture, the way he looked at art, always had something to do with music and color. So, yep, so synesthesia. he sees yeah. music as color. And, and so I'll try and find synesthesia. that and send that to you because it sounds like there's some commonality there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was great. Crazy. I love your journey. I mean, even though it's painful, well, the creative it, outlet has been a beautiful journey. What a, what a gift. And the thing is, I love to be able to step back and look at the art and say, how? Because I can't. I can't answer how. I've actually, I had a woman, another woman recently who wanted me to teach her how to create art the way I do. And I just can't do it because... I use over a hundred programs and I weave and I do this and I do that and I experiment and I end up with what I have with no clue of how I got there. So, yeah. Diana, Any, uh, yeah. this, this is Judy Kirtley. I, I'm not hey. seeing me on the screen, but hello. Um, hello. I, uh, <laughs> I just I, I wrote down questions which you just answered some some of them um, that you're using hundreds of programs and I sort of understand that uh, are these programs that you sought out to accomplish uh, w what you need to get down um, also uh, mm -hmm. when you're creating a piece are you consciously seeking uh, or does it it come as you walk through the programs uh and uh, and it gives you uh, i this is such a complex question and the answer is probably it, it, not possible um also what are, are you printing this these pieces on what kind of thing and uh, you say you talk you talk about texture uh that you, yes. you can feel it it's something that you get through your your sense your special senses yes my spider senses you know kind of like yes i feel like my eyes touch so i can feel that texture in my fingertips by looking at it does that make sense so i i mean my eyes take in sound they take in touch and i i have a lot of vision problems actually and wear prisms that's related to brain injury. So I know that that informs the way I do art. Um, I use different programs for different functions. N Judy, sometimes not the way they're intended. I, you know, I think of it like a spice cabinet. You know, I wanna add some pepper. So let me find some pepper, try different programs. You know, um, there's no one way I create, but I find different functionality through different programs in ways that they probably were not totally meant to be used. Um, yeah, does that make sense? Absolutely. Uh, and um, you, you talk about wondering how you got what you got and-, and Yeah. Yeah. In a very strange way, I can relate to that. I look at my pieces and I say, I don't remember doing that. That's notwithstanding. <laughs> um, but also, the, what are you printing on? Oh, that's right. Um, I print on canvas now. I found a great printer called Pictorum in Canada, um, Quebec, or Montreal, one of them, right up there. And then I do an acrylic, a high-definition acrylic from a company in California called Artbeat Studio. And the acrylic is like almost a quarter inch thick or so. It's really nice. And I'll use a metallic paper so it gives it depth. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing your work. 
I know it was, oh, it's, it's a terrible, terrible reason that you got there, but <laughs> blessings on you. Thank you. Oh, I, 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 add, I mean, I'll take the gift. And that I, I want to add something that you mentioned that it's, it's like you cannot explain it. Is, yes. So I was uh, studying about Le Leonora Carrington, a surrealist who uh, lived, was born in England, but lived in Mexico. And when they interview her, she says, don't try to intellectualize it. I just do it. Uh, yeah. There's no thought about it. It's just, I feel like doing it. I do it. And I cannot explain why. So it's like a parallel to what you are mentioning. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, Any other, other questions, questions, please, or comments? You go ahead and give share your comments. Yeah. How about Wilma? Maybe you want to share something about the book. This is for us in Yeah, community. go. Well, well congratulations. I, well, thank you. Um, I was I was I was going to say um that Diana, when she wants to go after something, you know, <laughs> she's she teaches herself. And you know, she when she said she unloaded all these programs she knew nothing about them at the time but they looked like they might be interesting so <laughs> so she unloaded them and then she you know she sort of read a little bit and then she taught herself and she used them probably as she herself said in a way differently than other people use them but it was the way yeah. she found that they would help her um, and I'm, I'm every day I'm amazed um, when she'll send us something else that she's worked on. She is, I think you mentioned it in your introduction, how prolific she is. Um, she, this um, almost insane compulsion <laughs> uh, to create, which was one of the first signs of it. And I know that you I'm, I'm i'm a writer not an artist i mean a different i'm a different <laughs> kind of artist so i paint with words or i actually create with words my fingertips are my you know like much like much like you diana are my are my words but my process mm -hmm. is something where i i have a, a, a an idea of what i want to say but i i let my i let my fingers kind of grab what's coming out of my brain and then I fidget with it. And I think in many ways that process is very similar that I don't know how mm. it's going to turn out. I have this sort of this idea, but um, one other comment I wanted to make, and I think you will all appreciate it as artists is that when I first saw some of her pieces, I fell in love with the names she had for them. <laughs> I thought that they were almost as creative as the pieces themselves. <laughs> and then when you started looking at them, oh my gosh, that makes total sense. <laughs> um, but I wondered if some of you saw um, in her pieces um, a very spiritual quality. I don't know if any of yeah, you. Yeah, hopefully, because that definitely informs my work a lot. Yeah. I have a question. So okay. right in this latest book that you will publish this summer. So you who came up with the idea? What goes first? Are the images first and the writing after? Is it together? Is it simultaneously? What is the process? How do we do it, Wilma? Um, well, it's a little bit of both. When we wrote the first we, we wrote the first book, um, which was her, you know, her story. Um we also thought that it was for adults and we realized that it was just a story of, of, of persistence and hope and faith and never giving up though bad things mm -hmm. happen. And we thought, well, what about an audience of kids? Mm -hmm. Couldn't they learn from, you know, from having things happen from being different but still being special in that way. And so we we th thought at the very beginning about, we should tell Diana's story in a way that children could uh, find mm -hmm. it helpful and inspiring. And um, so I think that's what well, we talked about it for a long time, but Diana was really tired from the first book <laughs> and she was busy creating art. 
And so with the second book, um, I don't know that we thought, well, we'll use an animal to tell the story because all kids love animals. And um, I think I woke up one day uh, early. I had I this in my head and and simply wrote the wrote the story. Yeah. And in that case, the words the words came first after a lot of talking, you know, back and forth. And then Diana worked on um, illustrating um, yeah, what show the, the story was. Yeah, what the story was saying, and. There's the cover. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's, oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's this delightful little story about mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a cat who is supposed to always land on its feet, right? Because that's what <laughs> cats do. But this particular cat, super cat, um, didn't <laughs> um, <laughs> after sliding off a very slippery table. And, um, and had you know and bonked his bonked her head, uh, and so in a way we're we're reflecting this that story in it, and yeah. she ends up the cat Max um, ends up uh, you know being different from others, but that difference made her special like everyone's difference. So um, we're yeah. ahead of schedule actually with you know the publisher. Uh, wrote that the book should be available um, at the end of February, so we're we're a few months ahead keep, its yeah. publication date. So we hope that you'll read it and love her her wonderful illustrations. Mm -hmm. I, I have a thought in that regard. Um, I don't know how to pose it. Every child is special mm -hmm. in his or her own way, but some children are never exposed or are they are not exposed to something special. And then they think that they're not special because they didn't know about it or because they don't possess this or oh, that. Interesting angle. Yeah. So can you speak to that? You or Wilma? In a, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, I think it. we try to get that point across that no matter who you are um, is so it, the book is meant to be a little bit interactive. And so when you get to a, when you get to a, a certain part where um, Max is in the animal hospital and Max stops thinking about herself and starts to think about all the other people in it. And, and um, we ask the question, um, you know, about what do you think makes Max special? And one of the things, you know, that's a possibility is, well, Max cares about other people. Mm -hmm. And so that's a form of specialness. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, that you are in a wheelchair or that your fa your head is, is shaped differently or that <laughs> you, know, you wear glasses. Um, it's really about um, your inner traits and and we hope that it will get people to think about well what do they have that makes them special mm. so we like yeah. to think it's we i hope we did that diana <laughs> that we make people think, feel very inclusive yes i hope yeah i think so well let us brandy. know brandy go ahead let us know when the book comes out Oh, uh, of course. Facebook, yeah, because I know a, a lot of kids um, and I would share it with them. Oh, um, wonderful. Thank you. The other thing I wanted to say was um, Diana's work I find very dynamic. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. something that I find very interesting about it um, in regards to abstract work and there's mm -hmm. something that feels very personal about it, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of unusual. Like a lot of times you look at abstract work and you're not really feeling the person behind it. Mm -hmm. But I feel that in all your work, 
maybe it's just me bringing to my interpretation to it. Um, I feel like we're looking at you at part mm, of that's the awesome. Yeah. And um mm. and that is that invisible, mysterious mm. art thing that <laughs> cannot really be explained. It's kind of like when you work at look at a piece of art and it it moves you. And you can't really say why it moves you. Um, and I feel like your work has that quality. Mm. And it's it's an incredibly special quality. Thank you. And I, I feel that mystical quality. And that's what it, that's what allows me to step back from it and feel a sense of wonder. And I mean, I love that because it makes my art always new. There's always a nice surprise, and I never know what's coming next. Yeah, because it comes no anticipation. Across. It comes oh. across in the work. That's so. awesome. Well, thank you for that validation. That's great. Annette, share something with us. I'm, I'm in awe of what I heard and uh, oh. saw today. <laughs> um, I'm not as articulate. Um, about my work or, or expressing the emotions of what I feel when I look at your work. But wow. um, the one thing that I put myself down, which in your case is is a big thing, is that I, I don't know what I'm going to create. I, I face the blank canvas, the music mm -hmm. is going, it gets me moving physically, and I have no idea what I'm going to create. And and I always felt that that was a negative. Uh, I, I'm changing my mind <laughs> today. Good, good. That's and the excitement, the wonder. That, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. So thank you for the presentation, and, and, oh, uh, and I'm commending you for all you're achieving in spite of what thank you're doing. Thank you. Amazing, Thank you're an you. inspiration. Thank, Thank you. you. If I, if I might, <laughs> I'll put a oh, well. I'll just put a little plug in because you know I don't know if if after a, you've done a piece, you kind of have to take a breather or go through a dry spell, um, you know, before you you know pick up, you know, whatever you're creating with and start again. But we were we were fortunate when the publisher. Uh, took our our splat splat book <laughs> and <laughs> also in the contract said and they'd like to you know they'd like to have two other books and so we're at the point now where we're so happy this one is coming out and it's like what's the next one going to be what <laughs> so if uh, I've learned so much from Diana um about art that I didn't know about I've had such an appreciation and an amazement and I'm in awe of of sometimes sitting mm -hmm. as you're allowing me to do today, I feel very, very grateful to you and to your questions and to your ideas. And so if you have any other ideas about <laughs> something that we can, Diana and I can collaborate with, with the words and the illustrations, we would, she'll take notes. <laughs> okay, I have something. Make oh. a really big, beautiful uh, uh, coffee table book on the, the mm. paper that would make you happy and oh. and uh and you can write uh you can write on you know off the opposite page something about the creation mm. of it oh. that would be my dream i would right love there. to see that wow i mean because i got fractals i could go on for miles <laughs> i mean but if that opportunity ever comes i well yeah i i do have an article coming out march 5th in psychology today so that's the the story's been been brought to a national stage so it should be fun it should be fun <laughs> yeah annette you wanted to ask something or add something i i just wanted to clarify about the printer that is being used on on your um beautiful work Pick does it actually use uh, paint itself to print out your creation? No, what I do, um, um, 
I do canvases and they are printed on the canvas and then I add a knife varnish. I have the fabricator add a knife varnish so it gives it the, that brush texture which people love. It's really nice and a little bit of shimmer, yeah. But the color comes from the printer when it... Yes, the yes, there's the no hand. paint. But there is, I, I'm having clear varnish put on each one. Okay. So do you make limited editions? How many do you print? Limited editions. And since I'm in a gallery now, that's the agreement. So I have to have things specific for the gallery. And I'm doing one of ones. And I think I should throw the cost of suffering in the price. <laughs> so <laughs> this, this other piece that I did last night, I'm going to add extra to it. I'd love that as a 48 by 48. That'd be fun. Yeah, so um, I, I am learning to do just limited pieces to bring really better value to the art. And I have so much art coming to me. So I'm not concerned about drying up with creativity. It just, yeah. Well, this has been amazing. We are very Thank you. happy to have learned so much about you and about <laughs> Wilma. It's nice that you're collaborating, uh, publishing these books, because they are a good example for humanity. And uh, <laughs> adults need it. Uh, the, the older we grow, you know, we get we get more injuries and we think, oh, like that's the end of the world. And for you, it's just a start of a new career, <laughs> a new you. Yeah. So right. this is just inspiring to all. I have grandchildren and sometimes, you know, they are uh, my little one. Oh, he's not as good as the others in certain sports. So he quits. Aww. And that's mm -hmm. not the idea. The idea is to be a fighter and to continue until you can beat the odds. So I think that's it's very right. Very that's exciting. exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. If anybody else wants to add anything, but we're very grateful and looking forward did to I, the did next, I, did <laughs> next now our presentation next month. Please contact me so uh, we can schedule you. And uh, thank you for tuning in. And thank you. Thank you, everybody. Diana. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for mispronouncing your name at the beginning. Okay. You mentioned no, who I forgot, <laughs> you know. but now I got it. <laughs> so all no, the people, it's, it's no problem. have a creative week, a creative lifetime, peace to humanity. Yeah. And let's Amen. be happy, happy <laughs> Valentine's to all, joy, Valentine's. blessings, blessings Thank to you. all. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Bye-bye. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> happy Wednesday. Thanks, Denise. Let, Denise, don't hang up. Let's just stay a little bit. I want to tell you something. So if